Welcome to the Dragon Cabin. Wanted to make a quick video showing you how I'm going to heat my tiny house for the winter. Hoping to winter in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. So heating is a really important thing to take into consideration. And obviously insulation is really important too, but having a solid heating system that you can rely on, keep your space warm when it gets down below freezing is really important. So let's get right into it. We have the thermostat uh, it's turned on with this switch here and then that controls a relay based off of the temperature and the relay basically sends power to the fans that are on this radiator it's uh, two CPU radiators and four CPU fans and they're all connected with PEX pipe which is rated for really high temperatures and so outside, I'll show you in just a second, I've got an instant hot water heater running propane and basically heating water to 80 degrees Celsius, sending it into these radiators, and then all the heat gets blown into the cabin uh, by these fans. And you don't have to worry about, you know, propane, exhaust, or fumes or anything getting into your living space, which is really important when you're living in... 72 square feet, you know, you need all the air that you can get for yourself. You don't want to have a heater burning any of your precious oxygen. So let's uh, take a look outside and uh, look at the more technical parts of the system. So this is my utility box I just put on the hitch. You can see there the hot water heater on the left, propane tank, uh, the gas valves, solenoid for the stove inside and a valve for the water heater and the input and output water pipes there uh, hot water pump there it's a very robust pump that's made for very high temperature water like for solar heating systems so the hot water heater i actually had to install a thermostat for it and it's basically has a sensor right on the copper pipe coming out of the hot water heater. And it's constantly cycling the water temperature between about 80 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. So when it gets down to 50 degrees Celsius, it switches the relay, which turns on the water heater and starts heating the water up again until it gets up to 80 and then it switches it off and just keep cycling that indefinitely until the inside thermostat reaches its, you know, the temperature you want the inside of the space to be. Uh, as far as the tubing, um, everything's brass. I had problems with rust using just regular pipes before. Uh, obviously you need a hose at the highest point of the system to collect any air bubbles that might come out. And I just put a little stopper there because I've already bled all the air out of the system. But if I ever needed to let any air out, I would just pop that out and maybe shake some things around, you know, try to get any bubbles that are stuck in the system out. Because if there's bubbles in the radiators, then obviously that area of the radiator is being wasted because the water can't reach it and you're not transferring any heat there. So you want to get all the air out of your system. And this is just actually from a motorcycle it's a coolant overflow tank and so I just keep it about half full of coolant and then it's just tying into the system you know right there basically going directly into the pump because the pump is not self priming you know it kind of needs a certain pressure of water pressing into it when you're first setting up the system just to get the air out because it doesn't really create pressure it just pushes water so it can't really suck water in, it has to be fed water uh, at the very beginning. So we'll watch this thing kick on one more time. Boom. See the flames in there. It's kind of cool. I really wanted a like a vented gas fireplace inside the trailer, but that was just going to be too much uh, too much.
too much money basically to buy the one I wanted. So this whole system only costs about $200, which is really affordable for the amount of BTUs. I mean, I think you might be able to get like 10,000 BTUs out of the system based off of just stuff I was reading. And I've got a propane gauge here just to let me know when I need to switch out the tanks so I don't run out in the middle of the night, have a really cold night. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I built a little exhaust glue, used some high temperature sealant on it. I've been making sure it doesn't get too hot in here, but I'll probably run some more tests just to make sure. I'm going to put some flashing around this whole heater area because it does get a little warm in this area. So I want to make it pretty fireproof in there. All right, if you got any questions or you want to see anything else, uh, just put a comment down below. Hit subscribe. I hope I'm to be making a lot more videos like this, just showing off off-grid homesteading, tiny house, you know, cool stuff. So anyways, hope you enjoyed, maybe learned something, and I'll see you later.